how do we model uncertainty? How do we measure uncertainty? That's the question we now have to answer because we decided that for us information will be reduction in uncertainty. So one possible very simple answer to this question is we simply use the number of possible values in a guess list as a measure of uncertainty. So when I raise a question to you, you have a guess list of answers and the number of possible values, the, the size of that guess list is a measure of uncertainty. So let's take a few more examples. Suppose I tell you that I have a prime P in my mind and that prime is less than 10. So you know that if it's less than 10, there are just four possibilities for this prime P. It can either be 2, 5, 7, uh, 2, 3, 5 or 7. So there are just four possible values and therefore uh, in with this measure of uncertainty, the number of possible values, uh, the uncertainty of this P, the uncertainty in this unknown P is just 4. Let's look at another question. Suppose I showed you this letter, this, this word C question mark T and I told you that I have a word in my mind and it's a three letter word. The first letter is C and the last letter is T and the middle letter is something I'm not sure about. Then in this case, you, you know that there are three possible values of this middle letter and therefore your uncertainty here is, uh, your uncertainty here is 3. Let's look at a slightly more complicated example. We think of this auto completion in an email client. So I use Gmail sometime and Gmail's auto completion basically tries to complete the sentences for me. So here is a sentence that I have uh, that I try to type on my uh, email client and perhaps you can't see it. Let me read it for you. So it says, dear all, there will be no information theory class today. A makeup class will be held on Tuesday. Sorry for, and then my client suggests the confusion. At this point, there could have been a, there could have been various guesses for completing my sentence. For the confusion was one, that's what my email client chose, but it could have been for the inconvenience. There could have been many more, but perhaps these are the only two possibilities which my email client had in mind. So uncertainty for my email client is two. For you, there are many more possibilities because you haven't seen my emails. You don't know what I typically write when I'm writing my email. And so for you, this uncertainty is much larger. Okay. So this was another interesting example. Let's look at an example of different kind. Suppose I told you that I have a vector, a three dimensional vector in my mind, which lies within a unit ball, a, un a Euclidean ball of radius one. And I told you that this vector can be stored using 16 bits per coordinate. What is the uncertainty of X? Well, this question is not very concrete, but maybe you can think about the answer. What are the possible values of this X? How many such X are possible? Okay, so I'll leave you to think about this question, but let's move forward with another example. This is also an, another interesting example. So earlier I told you that I had a prime in my mind and it was less than 10. Suppose now I told you that I have a prime in my mind and it's less than 10 to the power 100. What's the uncertainty now? Well, now the guess list is really big. You need a really large computer to list down all the primes less than 10 to the power 100 and count the number of possibilities. And that's the uncertainty. So each of these examples are of different kinds. The first example where I told you that I have a prime P less than 10 in my mind that example is very concrete. All of us will, may agree that the uncertainty in this example is just four. There are just four possibilities there. The second example, where I told you that I have a three letter word in my mind and the first letter is C and the last letter is T. Well, that's a little bit less concrete. Based on how good your vocabulary is, different words may come to your mind. But for most of us, that list would be either cat, cut or caught. Example three, which was the example of my Gmail client, Gmail e uh, email client. Everyone can think of many other guess guesses and your guesses will depend on how well you know me. Okay. So my email client, which knows me really well because it reads all my emails for that, that guess list was very small. It just made, just narrowed it down to two or three guesses. Sorry for the inconvenience. Sorry for the confusion. Perhaps sorry for the complication. Sorry for the late notice. It could have guessed any of these. But for you, sorry for the pizza is a valid choice because you have no clue what I'm going to say next because you don't know, don't know me well enough. So what this example brings out is that this measure of uncertainty depends on who is trying to answer the question. Example four, which was this unknown vector, three dimensional vector within a unit ball. 
there a different aspect comes out. The number of guesses that you have depends on the acceptable accuracy. So they can be many, there are infinitely many vectors in the unit ball, but maybe the, uh, maybe, maybe you will be, maybe the, the person asking the question, that's me here, will accept an answer to a certain accuracy. And based on that accuracy, that there can be finitely many guesses. And that's the measure of uncertainty here. It's related to what accuracy is acceptable to you. The final question, when I just told you that I have a prime in my mind and it's less than 10 to the power 100, well, there the, pos the possible guess list, guess list can be very large actually. And uh, it depends on how much computation you have that you can form your guest list. So someone with a very large computation at their disposal can form a very large guest list. Someone with smaller computation at their disposal will make a smaller guest list. This is another interesting aspect that the uncertainty also depends on computation that is available to you. Okay. So one more point, maybe this is slightly different, uh, slightly different aspect. Till now we were answering, we were, we were measuring uncertainty as the number of possible values, but suppose we need to store the answer to the previous questions. How many bits will it take? What we will do is we'll look at the number of possible answers and take the log of that log to the base two. And that's the number of bits it will take. So this log to the base two of the number of possible answers is the number of bits it will take to store the answer. So instead of just saying that the cardinality of my guess list is, the, is my uncertainty, uh, if I want to measure uncertainty in bits, I can say the log of that cardinality log to the base two is the measure of uncertainty. Uh, later, we will see in this course why this makes more sense than just saying the cardinality uh, is the measure of uncertainty. The log of cardinality makes more sense. We will see that why. Alright, so from these examples, some very interesting uh, lessons come out. First, uncertainty, uh, uncertainty can vary based on your knowledge or belief. Different people can have different amount of uncertainty for the same question. Second, all the elements in your guest list may not be equally likely. You may have different uh, likelihood for different guesses. For instance, when I told you that I'm thinking of a word, a three letter word, which starts with C and ends with T, perhaps the most likely answer is cat. Perhaps the second most likely answer is cot. Uh, maybe some of you get to know that I have a young kid and then you may think that the most likely answer is cot. And second most likely answer is cat. So these guesses don't come out uh, just as a guess. Each guess has a likelihood of uh, occurring in your mind. Okay, third aspect, which we saw in that example of uh, an unknown X in a unit Euclidean ball, in the unit Euclidean ball, is the notion of accuracy. The accuracy up to which an answer is acceptable also determines the measure of uncertainty. Well, this point is not very important for now, but we'll come back to it. So these are some of the lessons which come out. So one very important thing that I have touched upon here is that all guesses are not equally likely and they depend on and, and how you rank order the guesses, which guesses are more likely for you and which are less depend on your previous knowledge or belief. Okay. Motivated by these things, what we will do is we will use not only the cardinality of guess list as a measure of uncertainty, we'll have some more refined information about it. We will use probabilities to model the likelihood of different guesses. Okay. So not only we will have a list of guesses, we'll also have probabilities associated with each guess to, to, to model the likelihood of each guess. So here is uh, what we will do. I'm just setting up some basic notation for the course. All right. So throughout this, this strange looking X is my calligraphic X. It's my set of guesses that of all possible answers that I can have. This, this set X in most cases will be a discrete set, uh, but in some cases we'll also look at continuous sets. So discrete set is something like natural numbers, uh, something like numbers between one and 10. A continuous set is something like reals, okay, which has infinitely many, uncountably many points. The notation here is notation for cardinality of a set and we assume that this set X, the set of all possible answers has K possible values, number of possible outcomes. It's some number K because it's a discrete finite set. We can have this number K. All right. For each guess X in this set, we have a probability PX associated with that answer. 
So the answer X is the correct answer in, in our view with probability PX. This moderates the likelihood of answer X being correct. So with this, we have a list of likelihoods PX1 to PXK. Remember there are K elements in this set. So we have a list of likelihoods PX1 to PXK, which represent how likely our guesses are in our view. And this provides a ranking between the guesses as well. Okay, one question will come to your, uh, your mind, may come to your mind. Who came up with this P? Well, this answer uh, can only be subjective at this point. So this P is with the answer, if, if the person who is trying to answer the question. So he, he or she came up with that guess list. He, came, he or she came up with also the likelihoods of different guesses. It depends on his or her knowledge. All right. And uh, or you can think of it as some general wisdom or some common knowledge which everyone has agreed on on this guest list. But for this course, we won't worry about that. We will assume that this guest list is available and different answers have different possibilities. For example, 4, which was that uh, three-dimensional vector example, this, uh, we, we need not just look at discrete, discrete, discrete probabilities like here. We also need to look at continuous distributions. So for, with this in mind, what we realize is that to measure and model uncertainty, we have to use probability. So what I'll do next, I'll try to review some basics of probability, uh, some basic probability, maybe advanced undergraduate probability, so that we can build on it and have a concrete mathematical model of uncertainty. That's what we'll do next.